Hello! In today's video we're going back to OpenIPC and doing part three which is about taking our ground station, our camera and connecting a flight controller to it. So you have to imagine this would be on a configuration like a quadcopter or a plane and we're basically going to get telemetry out of the flight controller so the OSD looks a bit more informed. Now I'm not going to be going through things in great detail because I'm basically expecting you to have watched the last two parts, especially part two, the great big one, about how things are configured and stuff like how you'd SSH to things and use volley and stuff. So if you need to go back and revise that, please do, and I'll be zipping through this quite quick subject, quite easy one. Before we get going on that though, I have to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. When you're dealing with a community project like this, being able to prototype and manufacture things that are out of your normal range of what you can do is pretty handy. And of course, PCBWay is famous for being able to prototype and build PCB boards. And as I said before, I know very little about designing PCB boards, but if there's anything that needs extra designs, stuff like this would be handy. But never fear, if you're a brilliant designer and you come up with something, you can always do so, share your Gerber files, and everybody else can benefit from it because they can order things directly just using these. I've done it before, not knowing anything, and have got, you know, bits back in the post that magically work. But of course PCBWay doesn't just do PCBs, it does uh, other ways of physically making stuff like CNC milling, sheet metal fabrication, injection moulding and 3D printing. And you might have a 3D printer like I have a 3D printer which is great for doing stuff like PLA and TPU. But what if I was prototyping bits that needed to be metal? Amongst the many materials PCBWay can print with, it can also use SLM printing to produce pieces in aluminium, stainless steel or titanium. So if you've got a need to make stuff, then uh, check out the link below, PCB Way. Thanks very much for sponsoring this video. So while I've been off doing stuff since part two, OpenIPC have had their own few announcements. I'll cover that after the config part. So let's get on with that. So if you went ahead and soldered your serial connections on this TX and RX here, then you don't need to do this bit. As I mentioned in the last video, I found that a bit dodgy and so wanted to use this second UART port here. So if you've gone along and used that one, you'll need to do these instructions. If you're using this one, you won't need to do anything at this point. And what I need to do is say thanks to Arvet333 because rather than me having to figure this out myself, he has gone ahead and uh, added and, and made some corrections on my document and also talked about how to use this second UART for telemetry. So it talks about which files to actually change, which I'm going to follow through now. So first thing you'll need to do, power on your camera, connect it to your regular Ethernet and go ahead and SSH into it. We've got two files to edit on this one, uh, actually three files um, because I did some changes to init tab so I could uh, see if I could use that serial port to go ahead and open a terminal on. So I need to stop running a TTY on that. Anyway, first off, if going to etc init.d there's a bunch of startup files here and we're going to go ahead and edit s95 majestic and in this all I'm going to do is go ahead and paste in a couple of lines from the useful guide we've got like that. I'm going to go ahead and save that, go up to directory and then I'm going to go ahead and edit, uh, well you can see it here, there's a file called telemetry.conf uh, and if we edit this one, this is, makes a little bit more sense than the other one, it actually tells us the serial port we are using and we want to use S2 on this particular one. Uh, it took me quite a while to figure out which port was which on this. Now, if you went ahead and you tried logging in using that serial port, you will also want to go into uh, init tab and just go ahead and comment out the TTYs. Uh, basically, running a, a, a Getty will let a console login happen on that one. It doesn't change you being able to SSH in, but yeah, this stuff's fairly important. 
OK, and that should be it. Now, whether you have to do this or not, the next step is common. And what we need to do is grab ourselves a flight controller and connect it as we would if we were on a quad or a fixed wing plane. OK, so what I found lying around, I don't have any spare flight controls, actually. They're all in places. Is this little F7 um, Rush FPV flight controller. And because I don't want to solder anything, this is just a desk config, I'm going to use the, the RX setup here. So I've got a little connector that goes into that, like so. And as per last time, I've got this connector I made up, which goes into that second UART port. So all I'm doing is connecting up the ground TX to RX and then uh, TX to RX. So we're swapping those bits over. I don't think you need anything from here that um, receives. I think it's all transmit, but I've connected both of them up because it certainly can't hurt. But before I do anything, I need to just configure this. So I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to connect this to USB just to do the quick configuration I need. Obviously, just remembering which um, UART I need. This is RX2, TX2, as you can see, just written there. Yours could be anything, and maybe you'll be using soldered ends as well. But um, anyway, into Betaflight we go. OK, here we are in Betaflight. It just so happens that this board's running Betaflight. If you're running iNav or something else, I'm trying to think of other things. Mostly they're things like derivatives of Betaflight or something, so it probably doesn't make a difference. The only other very different thing is ArduPilot, in which case it's going to be easy for you because this is about setting up Mavlink. And people think that Mavlink is something that only happens on ArduPilot. And it's certainly a big part of that. But you can actually set up Mavlink on Beadflight, on iNav, on pretty much anything we fly. And this is important because this is the telemetry that OpenIPC speaks. So uh, UART2 is what I had. That's set up as a receiver at the moment. So I'm just going to change telemetry output to Mavlink and set the board rate to 115200, save and reboot. That is it. Very similar on iNav and you should know what you're doing if you're using RG Pilot because that only speaks Mavlink anyway. Anyway, with that uh, set up, we can now connect that in and connect the ground station and power it up and see what happens. Okay, so just connecting that together on the bench, we've got the ground station here, we've got a battery powering our uh, Wi-Fi adapter on the camera side, we've got a battery powering the lot, we've got a fan on our two Wi-Fi units, and we've got our flight controller plugged into USB and plugged into telemetry. And on the screen there, we have this. So if I just, pick this guy up and you see I can pretend I am tilting the quad like that go up and down obviously I haven't got any uh, voltage or anything connected because I haven't got that but that is it the telemetry basically works it was pretty simple wasn't it so that was pretty easy wasn't it now obviously I didn't have all the OSD populated because I just had this plugged in via USB. I'm doing a desk configuration here. So there is a, quite a difference between my desk configuration and actually having this on a plane or a quad, which is something I want to do soon when the weather gets better. It's starting to look a bit better actually now we've got into March. However, if you haven't already started that, the question is should you wait around for something better to come along? As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, OpenIPC have had a few announcements over the last few weeks. And the, the first is that they're starting to sell their own configs. They've got this thing called the OpenIPC Ultrasight, which is this nice small board with a small camera, much more uh, reasonable than the, the size of this one. Um, and that was in a, a sort of a limited run of 100 pieces and they've already sold out of that. But if you look at on their in development bit, they've got all these boards and things that uh, should be available at some point in time. And the question is, should you wait around to, to do that? And the answer is, if you want to do this, if you want to be into OpenIPC um, and you're not super technical, then probably is the answer to that one. If you've got boards like this lying around and you're into messing around with hardware and software, then crack on and, and do it. I should warn you though, there's a difference between having this all-in-one camera board and having a plug and play solution. Although this is a brilliant step forward in the right direction because 
the biggest hassle to do with these things is the flashing, the putting the new firmware on there um, and breaking to the bootloader and doing all that stuff. That bit's done for you. But it doesn't mean you can just connect it up to your goggles. You still need to get some sort of um, receiver and DVR board like this MVR one we talked about last time and you still have to go through that config to do it unless I open IPC up. Fingers crossed, hopefully developing something that's simple. And the other important thing is, although the flashing is done for you, there is still the software configuration. So you still need to be able to SSH to the board. You still need to generate the key pair for WFBNG. Uh, you need to edit the WFB.conf file so you have the right Wi-Fi channel. You may need to config the uh, Majestic YAML on the camera and still do the VDEC.conf on the ground station. None of those things have changed. So it's it's not plug and play, but if you can at least buy a camera that's pre-flashed and is, is ready to, to go, that's a, certainly a step forward in the right direction. As I said, at some point I need to put this on something. That's the that's question for the weather improving, because at the moment I'm, I've no idea what sort of range or penetration this is going to give me. Um, it might be great, it might be rubbish, I might need better Wi-Fi adapters and I don't know the sort of picture situation, how far we can go, what happens if we go through a brick wall. That stuff needs to be tested. But until I do that, I'm interested if you guys need to know any more in terms of how do I do this? What would I do if this happened? If you've got those questions, feel free to fire them away. And um, if I get, you know, multiple ones of the sort of same sort, then I can make another video of that. But hopefully, at some point, we'll put this on something and we'll try and fly it or drive it. <laughs> when I start off with new things, sometimes I don't like to have them in the air unless I've got a very uh, good return to home capacity. Anyway, hope that video has been helpful and I will see you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.